It's the Scotty Myers Show. Hey, welcome to this week's edition of the show. Hopefully you're having a great week so far. Of course, I'm your host, Scotty Myers. Thanks for uh, joining us, following us on all the social media channels, at Scotty Myers on uh, Twitter, and the Scotty Myers Show on Facebook and Instagram. We're going uh, wall-to-wall geek again. Uh, a lot of DC news this week, uh, but we will start start first off Star Wars. There's nothing going on in the world of Star Wars right now. It is very quiet in a galaxy far, far away, but I am sure uh, announcements are coming any day now. I would expect, you know, here we are in September, that, you know, sooner rather than later, we're going to get our first look at the Book of Boba Fett which really we haven't seen anything from yet uh, outside of a couple of still images and some behind the scenes footage that kind of got leaked, but uh, really like nothing official. So I would imagine we will see something uh, Book of Boba Fett related relatively soon. My guess may be uh, mid-October, like October 14th, 15th. That would uh, maybe take a little bit of headlines away from DC Fandom on October 16th, and we're going to talk about DC Fandom a little bit later on. Uh, First, let's start with a couple of uh, sequel announcements. Uh, First off, Jungle Cruise has greenlit a sequel. I haven't had a chance to see the first one yet. I'd I'd like to. I like these movies based on the rides at at Disney World, just because the rides, they do such a great job at Disney, uh, whether at any of the parks, creating a story for the ride. It's not just a ride. There's a giant story involved with it. And so it leads to making, you know, films based on them. So I like the idea of them. Uh, They've been a little hit and miss. Uh, You know, obviously Pirates, a giant hit. Haunted Mansion, probably my favorite ride. That was a little bit of a miss. Uh, But I I like them swinging for the fences on it. And the fact that they've uh, already announced a sequel for Jungle Cruise is, is good news for everybody involved. And I expect the entire cast to be back. Sticking with Disney announcing sequels, I kind of want to take a bit of credit for this one because I've been banging this drum for a little while. As a matter of fact, you go back to the podcast, uh, we did a good chunk of an episode on the the first film, and that's The Rocketeer. Yeah, yeah, we we did Does the Rocketeer Hold Up? We kind of figured that it did and begged for a sequel, and we're getting it. And it's going to Disney+, Plus, which is kind of where I said the sequel should go. You, you kind of had a movie that's got a cult following. You know, I wouldn't necessarily roll that back out into the theaters and spend a ton of money on marketing a Rocketeer sequel. But if you put it on Disney+, Plus, I think even more people would watch it. You know, people are just going to be curious. What is the Rocketeer? Right now, the title is The Rocketeer Returns. That could change. It's a tentative title. But still, like, you know... If you saw that on Disney+, Plus, didn't know what it was, you at least check out the trailer. Uh, that's pretty much all that's known about the sequel right now. We don't know uh, the time frame. The only other thing that's been kind of confirmed is they're going to introduce a new Rocketeer. So we're going to have a moment in the movie where somebody finds the gear, uh, is my guess. I don't think it's going to be handed down. But uh, having said that, I there's a couple of things I hope for. Uh, in this sequel. First and foremost, keep it in the past. When I think of the Rocketeer and that technology, right? Like the, it's very basic. It's a guy in a leather jacket and, you know, khakis essentially with a helmet and a jetpack. There's not massive, you know, technology improvements there. So if you took it in the modern day, meh, you know, yeah, it's a guy that flies, but meh. And then you'd also get into the kind of gray world of we're going to make the Rocketeer, but we're going to update him. And now he flies with lasers. And it's just no, because that's not the Rocketeer. That's that's some warped version of the Rocketeer. So my my hope is, is that they keep it, you know, kind of set in the past, maybe not as far back. Like it doesn't have to be like the 30s, uh, which or uh, sorry, 40s. But you could definitely put it into the 50s, like that type of thing. Keep it like Indiana Jones, right? Like a modern day Indiana Jones movie, I don't know, would work. But they work really well because they're set in the past. And I kind of feel the same way about the Rocketeer. And, you know, just keep... I like the idea of keeping the action kind of grounded in reality as as much as you can with a Rocketeer movie as well. That was a one takeaway from watching the, the first film was that... Even though, yeah, you had a guy flying around with a jetpack, so that's not realistic. But it never went overboard 
in the craziness of what they were doing with the jetpack and and with the action sequences and stuff like that. And especially if it's a new rocketeer, you almost have that learning curve again, right? So it's not like a guy that's been fighting crime for 20, 30 years. It's a new crime fighter. So there's going to be some learning to be done. So I think if they can keep the kind of the underlying feel grounded in reality, keep it set in the past, I think this definitely could be a uh, a really great leap for the Rocketeer. And Disney Plus, perfect, perfect home for a Rocketeer sequel. So really looking forward to that. Super, super excited. Uh, switching over to Marvel, uh, everything is dominated by Shang-Chi right now. Uh, the movie is out, uh, getting amazing reviews. I have not had time to go see it, although I really, really want to. I did watch the tie-in that they have on Disney Plus. It's a little 14-minute thing. Uh, where they do an interview with Trevor Slattery. Now, like if you remember from Iron Man 3, when we were supposed to get the Mandarin as a villain, and Disney royally, Disney and Marvel royally fucked that up. Like there was, n- there's no excuse for Iron Man 3. There really isn't. Overall, the movie is Robert Downey Jr. hanging out with a kid, and every couple of minutes, he maybe for a couple of minutes total in the movie, he's Iron Man. And then they were like, yeah, but we're giving you Ben Kingsley as the Mandarin. And remember those ads? And he's got the voice, you know, you'll never see me coming. It was great. Like the marketing for Iron Man 3 leading up was great. And it was the worst bait and switch in movie history. Because then he's not the Mandarin, he's an actor and blah, 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 blah. So they have this little uh, kind of prologue to Shang-Chi on... Uh, Disney Plus, where you are reintroduced to him. He's in jail and that type of thing. And it's attempting to erase that in a way. It's almost like Marvel going, listen, (laughs) we know we upset you and really didn't do any justice to the Mandarin or the Ten Rings or any of that stuff. So here's our apology it kind of works a little bit, a little bit. It, it still a little like for what they're trying to do. It's about 15 minutes. What they're trying to do in that 15 minutes is pretty heavy, um, but it still comes across sometimes very jokey, which has always been my issue with Marvel movies. I'm not against jokes in superhero movies, but just sometimes they get they lean a little too heavy into the jokey. And and even in that you know, 15, 16 minute short film, it leaned a little heavy into the jokey sometimes. And it probably could have been ten minutes if they had cut a lot of that out. But it does at least attempt to erase what I would say so far has been the biggest blunder Marvel has made. So good on them for kind of, I guess, owning the mistake and acknowledging it. And now that they have this platform in Disney Plus, they could just roll it out there and say, see, oopsies. And now you can go see the movie uh, kind of without any any of that baggage hanging over it. Uh, the character's also been added as a skin in Fortnite. Uh, that was totally expected, uh, which is great. They've also added uh, Shang-Chi and um, Death Dealer as characters at Avengers Campus at Disneyland in California. They're moving very, very quickly. He's also been officially added to the Avengers in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, thanks to a TV spot that uh, welcomes him into the Avengers, which I think should have been done in a movie, not in a TV ad. But uh, still, lots going on with the character. As I said, reviews have been fantastic. And the movie is on pace to not only break the Labor Day box office record, but to pretty close to triple it, which is bonkers, especially since we're dealing with theaters closing and the Delta variant and all that kind of stuff out there. Um, Basically, it's analysts figure it's going to make 70.8 million over the first three days and over the full holiday weekend around 86 million. Now, if you're wondering uh, where that kind of puts it, well, it's on par with F9's three-day opening earlier this summer, and the previous Labor Day opening record was actually set by Rob Zombie's Halloween in 2007 when it opened to 30.5 million. So if uh, if this if uh, Shang Chi takes in 86 million, yeah, damn near triples that, which is incredible, especially with everything else going around. So uh, 
that's really good news for uh, for Marvel and and the future of, of this character and the franchise going forward. One of the most, I would say, anticipated Disney Plus Marvel shows is Moon Knight. And I really hope they don't fuck this character up because he's so cool. Uh, but they got great casting. Obviously, Oscar Isaac will be Moon Knight. Ethan Hawke is the villain. Uh, Ethan Hawke was recently doing an interview and he almost let it slip who he was playing, but he uh, he he backed up. He said he signed about ten thousand non disclosure agreements, so he couldn't really dis- uh, get into it. But he did say it was kind of fun and freeing because it's a character that most people don't know. It's a very uh, lesser known character in the world of Marvel, and uh, that's allowed him to have some fun playing the role and a little bit more freedom. He also praised Oscar Isaac's portrayal as Moon Knight, said he's absolutely amazing in the show. So uh, hopefully this show will uh, will do well, and, and hopefully they're true to Moon Knight. My, my only fear here is, as, as I said earlier, Marvel leans into the jokey a little bit. Moon Knight, serious character with some serious mental health issues that could be very powerful if addressed properly on the show, uh, but if they kind of dismiss them kind of like they did with Tony Stark's drinking problem. They hinted at it and then just ignored it. It could be a letdown if they don't delve into that side of the Moon Knight character. So hopefully they do. One last little bit of uh, Marvel news. There's been back and forth reports on uh, Venom, Let There Be Carnage, if it's going to be delayed or not. Still don't know if that's going to happen. We do know that, uh, speaking of delayed movies, though, that uh, Top Gun and Mission Impossible 7, uh, they got delayed till next year. Don't know about Venom, Let There Be Carnage yet, but we do know what it will be rated, and I'm a tad disappointed. It's going to be a PG-13 film. Uh, you know, just, eh. It would have been nice if it was R-rated with Carnage. And I know you don't want to do R-rated Stuff that's going to tie into Spider-Man eventually once Sony fully build, builds out their Spider-Verse. But still, Carnage. Character screams to be R-rated. Venom kind of screams to be R-rated. But you can get away with it a little bit when he's the good guy, Venom, that it's not an R-rated film. But uh, Carnage? Not so much. So it just tempers my expectation on just how much Carnage there will be. In the film, I know there'll be a lot of the symbiote carnage, but how much carnage will he be causing and how much blood and death will he be causing is is uh, now in question with this rating coming in. Hopefully it's still be good, though. Woody Harrelson, I think will crush it. Switching over to DC, they've made a few announcements uh, over the last little bit. We're getting an animated film called Merry Little Batman which is not a title you would expect. Uh, The show is going to focus on a six-year-old Damian Wayne at home by himself in Wayne Manor, obviously around Christmas time, and he has to become Little Batman uh, to basically stop a bunch of Gotham City crooks and supervillains intent on destroying Christmas. So eh, this could be okay. This could be fun. Uh, I have a feeling this is definitely going to be very, very kiddie. It's going to be part of uh, Cartoon Network's Acme block of Acme Night block of programming uh, before debuting on HBO Max at a later date. Um, we don't have a date for Merry Little Batman yet, uh, but Acme Night is expected to kick off on September 19th on Cartoon Network. Uh, so yeah, something to look forward to for the kids, uh, Christmas related. Not kid-related, not Christmas-related. Doom Patrol Season 3 is right around the corner. They released the full trailer online. Uh, Looks really, really cool. Doom Patrol doesn't get, I don't think, the love that it deserves. Because as a show, it is emotional and well-written, well-acted. And I just don't hear enough people talking about Doom Patrol. And I don't know if that's... You know, because it's moved around a little bit, because it started off, I don't remember what channel it started off on, but it moved, oh, it was on the DC app, and then it went to HBO Max, so uh, I don't know if that's what's holding it back or what, but if you haven't checked out Doom Patrol, you're you're missing out. I mean, you really are. It's, It's kooky, it's weird, but it's very heartfelt, very entertaining, and very well done, uh, so really looking forward to season three of that. The Ingested Animated Movie, we now have a release date for that, and that will be dropping October 19th. 
Uh, no word yet on an Injustice 3 video game, though, which is still a little disappointing. Uh, according to the director, Shazam! Fury of the Gods has wrapped filming, so they are done with that. Uh, so uh, now it's just the editing. I'm sure there'll be some reshoots, but uh, that's moving along nicely. So just a little bit of news on Shazam! Fury of the Gods there. We're going to get a new Batman trailer at DC Fandom. Uh, that has been confirmed. They came out, uh, a lot of people online were going, hey, when are we going to get another look at this thing? You know, we had that trailer a, a year ago. When do we get a second trailer? And uh, they have come out and said, yep, DC Fandom is the place that we're going to get our next look at Matt Reeves and Robert Pattinson's The Batman. Uh, so we just have to wait till October 16th for that. Speaking of DC Fandom, there is a bunch of stuff that has been confirmed. I just want to hit a few. I want to say a few. It's it's quite a few. Um, but there's a lot of video games can, that they're going to be talking about. Obviously, um, you know the uh, the new Batman game coming, the new Suicide Squad game coming. Those ones uh, will be there. There's a lot of comic book related stories that will be have panels. Uh, a lot of the animated shows and current shows like The Flash and and Teen Titans Go and all that kind of stuff. They're all going to have panels. But I wanted to touch on some of the newer stuff that has been confirmed for DC fandom because there will be some surprises, I, I would imagine. But uh, we know we're going to get a panel on Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom, so the sequel to Aquaman. Probably get to see some footage, I would think, because they've been shooting for a little while. But uh, we'll definitely get a little bit more information on what will be involved with the sequel. As I mentioned, we're going to get to see the Batman trailer, the second one for that. It will have a panel. Spinning out of that... Uh, is Batman Caped Crusader, an animated show heading to HBO Max. Matt Reeves, uh, the director of the Batman, is uh, also a producer on that one, as well as J.J. Abrams. So you got some big-time heavy hitters working on Batman Caped Crusader, and we're going to get a panel on that. Uh, DC League of Super Pets, an animated movie focusing on, you know, Crypto, the Super Dog, and Ace the Bat Hound, and, and uh, all that kind of, all, all of the kind of Justice League's pets which was a big thing especially like 50s 60s they all had to have a pet for some reason uh which really when you think about it impractical because if you have a dog like superman for example the dogs are a lot of work and they are going to get in the way i don't care if it's a super dog or not it's going to get in the way of you fighting crime like if you're mid fight with brainiac and you're like, oh, shit, I didn't take crypto out. And it's been quite a few hours. Like, you can't just leave the fight and go home and take the dog out. Anyway, uh, it was a big thing <laughs> for a while. Uh, they're getting their own movie, which is pretty cool uh, for, you know, kids and whatnot. Uh, I'm anxious to see some footage of that. Uh, the Flash movie, we are going to get to see that. Rumor has it we're going to see footage. They have been filming for a while now. And uh, apparently uh, some people like Michael Keaton are done filming. And they're switching gears and Ben Affleck's rolling in to start filming his Batman sequences. So uh, hopefully we get to see some footage of The Flash. It'd be a great place to give us a first full-on reveal of Keaton in the Batsuit. That would be sweet. I'm, I'm just hoping in that situation. Um, Peacemaker TV show. We're going to get to probably see a trailer for that. Um, it comes out in January on HBO Max, so I'd be shocked if we didn't see a full-on trailer for the Peacemaker show. Um, Shazam! Fury of the Gods, as I mentioned, it's wrapped, so it has a panel. I would expect at least footage, if not a full-on trailer there, because they could have been cutting a trailer while they were filming the, uh, the, the, the film. And I think probably the biggest, maybe the most anticipated panel, maybe after The Flash, I think it's a toss-up, is Black Adam. And that is confirmed that Black Adam will have a panel there. Again, we'll probably see some footage. It'd be great to see character designs of Hawkman and Dr. Fate. And maybe, you know, we haven't even seen The Rock uh, full on in the Black Adam costume yet. So even something like that would be really cool to see. Um, so those are just the movie and TV show panels that I kind of pulled out of the list. Like I said, there's a bunch more. It's going to be a loaded, loaded day. It's all a free stream. So if you want to check it out, you can. It doesn't cost anything. Of course, I'll be checking it out and then I will do a DC fandom wrap up. Uh, like I did last year for DC Phantom. And uh, 
the date of DC Fandom, October 16th. It starts at 10 a.m. Pacific time, which if my math is correct, I think that's 1 p.m. Eastern. Um, so it's basically going to take up an entire day with all these panels. Like there's no way they get through that day and that, that it's done in a couple hours. That's, it's it's going to be a whole day of announcements. And I do think they have some things up their sleeve. You know, that, that's that's what you really want out of these panels is buzz. And out of these events, you want internet buzz and chatter. And yeah, well, they're definitely going to get some if they when they give us a trailer for Batman and, you know, maybe they drop a trailer for The Flash or Shazam or something. They'll get some chatter out of that. But if they come out and announce a brand new project that hasn't been announced yet, um, you know, whether it's like releasing the air cut of Suicide Squad or just flat out going, hey, there's a you know, this guy movie coming. I mean, I could pick a th- thousand characters, but, uh, you know, this is happening. Or they announced James Gunn's next DC project. Anything like that would make massive waves in kind of the community of fans. And uh, I think those announcements are there to be had. And I don't think they've announced everything that they're going to talk about. So uh, DC fandom should be really, really good. At least I hope so. I'm crossing my fingers. And that will do it for this week's edition of the show. Thanks so much for tuning in. And of course, tell your friends, tell your family, tell your super pets, tell everybody you know, spread the word on the show. And until we chat again, have a good week. 